Good afternoon, Flosstube. My name is Darlene. I'm Darlene from Darlene Dion Designs. I wanted to do a question and answer video for you today. I asked a few videos back for questions after I had watched So Me Sarah do a question and answer Flosstube, which I enjoyed very much. So I decided to do one of my own. It's taken me a while to uh, to get the time to, to sit down and do it and to get all my questions and answers organized, but I am ready to do that today. Um, I have quite a few questions, some personal, some stitching related, and some quilting related. And uh, because of my internet situation, uh, I'm not sure how long this is gonna take, so I may have to break it up into two videos. So we'll see. Um, I'm not going to prolong it with unnecessary talk. <laughs> if I can help it, I do like to talk a lot, but uh, I'll try to keep it to a minimal. Um, I am a quilt pattern designer and a cross stitch pattern designer. And I think everything else that I usually say I will cover in, in the questions and answers. So let's get right started. I'm, I'm, going to start off with the personal questions. Um, <clears throat> Stitching by the River asked how much snow we get here where I live. So I live on Canada's east coast in Nova Scotia and um, I'm about seven minutes from the ocean. So definitely that has an impact on our on our snow uh, accumulation. We get a lot of we we get a we get a good amount of snow, <clears throat> but not horrendous amounts of snow. Um, we ha we had four inches, uh, around three to four inches last Thursday night, which is not always typical for this time of year. Quite often we don't get um, anything more than an inch or so um, until late December, and then through until. March. Um, uh, and then we got another bit of a squall, snow squall on Sunday afternoon. Um, again, we were, um, we were away at Keji. You've heard me mention Keji before, the campground. It's about an hour away from us. And we were in Keji for the day. And when we left the park, it had just started to rain with some bits of snow in it. And about 10 minutes in, we were in a full on <laughs> snow squall and the roads were not great. It was not a good drive home, but we, we, we had out there, there was about mm, three inches, maybe two to three inches. And when we got home, there was less. So, um, some, and no, no two winters are the same here. Uh, in 2015, we had a horrendous winter. It never really, we never really got any snow to speak of until the last weekend in January and it never stopped. Um, the storms, we would have two or three storms every week and they had a lot of accumulation and it stayed cold. So we still had snow like in our yard piled up in probably first part of May, maybe like end of April, first part of May. And I know in Prince Edward Island, all of the Maritimes, it was the same. In Prince Edward Island, in, in the areas they call cottage country, they still couldn't even get to their cottages like in May. It, it was just crazy. And I loved every minute of it. I am a winter girl. I love winter. I love snow. I don't mind driving in it. I drive slow. I, I yeah, I love winter. <laughs> I don't typically have to shovel it. So for those of you that do, I feel for you, <laughs> but uh, it is my favorite season. So, but like I said, we are near the ocean and that does have an impact. Um, we are in the woods, in the country, put it that way. And as you go closer to the shore, you get less snow. So in the towns, there's a town on either side of us, um, and the closer you get to the towns, there's less accumulation for snow because both towns are on the are on the water. So, yeah, it's it's life's good here. <laughs> I like it here. I like where we live. Um, we do get a lot of freezing rain here too. Uh, quite often we'll get 
snow, um, you know, like six, seven, eight inches of snow, and then a few hours of freezing rain on top of that, and it makes a crust on top of the snow. Um, that's not fun. I wish it would snow and stay snow. It, it's easier to deal with than, than the ice. <clears throat> anyway, Nor, uh, ND Quilter one asked, do I live in the town or country? Well, I just answered that. I live in the country. Uh, about 15 minutes either way puts us um, in the two closest towns to us. And then there's another one that's just a smaller village about 15 minutes in another direction. So it's not like I have to travel a long ways to get the, you know, the basics. Um, we don't have, we, we're three minutes from the, three minutes, we're three hours from the major city of Halifax, two and a half, three hours. And, you know, that's typically where you would, there'd be a Costco. Um, we have a Walmart, we have a superstore, a, you know, we, but we don't have Michael's. Michael's is about almost two hours away. So yeah, it's, but I love country life and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I, I, I love, I love this lifestyle. Uh, J 57 asked, how far back my ancestors lived in Nova Scotia. Um, I don't know much about my mother's family. I don't know why um, they've been here, but I don't think it was ever really, no one in my uh, close contacts has done any genealogy for my mom's side of the family. So. I don't really know much about her side, but my dad's side, uh, one of his cousins did a lot of research and wrote a little, put together a little booklet about um, the family. I was a Lewis, my maiden name was Lewis. And um, from what is in the book, our first ancestor came to Nova Scotia in 1783. And she also asked what their jobs were, what their occupations were. So they came from Wales and I couldn't find it today when I was looking, but I'm sure I've read or been told that uh, the earliest ancestor was a ship's captain. Um, and I've seen pictures of the ships in the, har in, the, um, in the river in the nearby town, which is where they would have settled. Um, also, uh, lumber forestry industry was very big in my, in my dad's family and fur farming. Don't judge us. <laughs> it was a way of life. It still is a way of life around here. Uh, I grew up on a fur farm. My dad raised minks and foxes and we had a pet fox, which we loved very much. We played with it until she did get a little bit more aggressive as she got older so dad wouldn't let us play with her much as we got older and she got older but uh yeah it it, it is a way of life here um and i understand the the uh controversy involved but um yeah it is what it is <laughs> okay Junie, Ju, so, and I should say if I pronounce, mispronounce any of your names, please forgive me, but Judy Greenhow asked if I was an early bird or a nighthawk, and I am definitely an early bird. When my eyes open, my feet hit the ground usually, <laughs> and they don't hit the ground running. Um, you know, I just, I, I don't see the point in laying in bed. Um, very rare do I just stay in bed. I get up <clears throat> and uh, come to the living room and have some quiet time to myself. Uh, sometimes I stitch then, not always, but sometimes I check out my social medias and it's just a good time to, to get ready for the day. I enjoy that quiet morning and my husband these days gets up pretty early because he's working, uh, close, you know, he's working sometimes close to an hour away from home. So he's up earlier recently than he has been in the past. So I, I miss that time when I'm by myself in the living room. But uh, anyway, yeah, I am an early bird. 
Carmen Mack asked, where would I consider living if I could not live here? Uh, and I have considered that over the years. We, I would stay in Nova Scotia. I love life in Nova Scotia. Um, people are flocking here to live in, in Nova Scotia and to enjoy the, the scenery, the beauty, the, the friendly people that, that, that it's a, it's a good, it's a good place to live. <laughs> um, and like I said, I live in the country. My son is about 50 minutes away from here. He's, he's in farm country. Um, and my daughter is about three hours away. Her husband works at the major airport. And um, so they are near the city. She is a graphic designer, so she can work from anywhere. But, um, you know, I've often said if I could find a place that had no mosquitoes, I would be really, really happy. And they tell me Iceland has no mosquitoes. <laughs> but I'm not planning to move to Iceland anytime soon. Uh, I would move to the ocean. I would move so that I was nearer the ocean because that also has an impact on the mosquitoes. Um, there are not as many uh, mosquitoes and black flies near the ocean as what there are here in the, in the woods. Uh, now, my husband grew up on the shore, on the ocean, and he has no interest whatsoever in ever going back there. He minds the wind. He does not like the destruction that comes from the wind, and he's seen enough of it when he was a kid. So, if I ever move to the ocean, <laughs> it'll be without my husband, and I don't want that. So, I'll probably stay here. <laughs> Uh, Sandra Moore asked about my siblings and I have one sibling, a sister, and I've mentioned her a few times before. She lives about 15 minutes away from me and we are very, very close. Um, we, we share hobbies. She's not a quilter. She, she has done English paper piecing for quilting and she loved that. But, um, Right now, we're both heavy into cross-stitch, and she is enjoying that very much. I do a lot of her finishing for her. She has three little grandsons. I don't have any grandchildren, so I am enjoying them when I get the chance. They are not as close. They're about an hour away. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I have the one sibling. I love her very much. We're very close. Uh, was my mom... Sandra also asked, was my mom crafty or is my mom crafty? My mom is still alive, but she has dementia now and she can't do any kind of crafts right now. But she, when we were kids, I, I, she wasn't what I would call crafty. She did all sorts of handwork, but out of, mostly out of necessity. Um, she used to piece quilts. I remember that some, but she mostly knit when we were Kids. she was a knitter and uh crochet she would crochet uh when the when the crocheted ponchos were a big thing we had crochet ponchos she made a lot of our clothing when we were kids um she knit for everyone that was having a new baby in the community or in our church she made them a little baby set which of course was the little sweater the the little bonnet and little booties and I wish that she had kept track of how many of them she had made and, and where they went over the years because she did a good number of them for gifts. Uh, in later years she quilted, hand quilted um, for a little bit of a side business you know she um, she always had a quilt in the frames. After we moved out uh, she took over the upstairs for quilting upstairs of the house. And so she often had a quilt in the frames upstairs for other people. And then when I got heavier into quilting and was selling quilts, she did most of my quilting too until she just couldn't anymore. And then mostly, mostly everything I have done now is machine quilted. <clears throat> Kim Colangelo asked if I have a job outside of the home. And I do not. Um... I worked for until COVID. Um, in March of 2020, I was working at a bank and I have a 
I have a serious medical history, so um, the doctor suggested that I come home during COVID. So, you know, I came home, thought I'd be home for two or three weeks. <laughs> and three months later, I was still home and decided at that point that I would not go back to work and pursue designing patterns more, which is what I had been wanting to do anyway, but just didn't really have the time to put to it. So it is the best thing, best move I ever made for myself and my family. Um, it's just, it's wonderful. And it, I just, I can't tell you enough. Um, I get people want a career. I totally get that. Um, but for me, my satisfaction and happiness comes from being at home and uh, caring for my family. And the, I just, I love, I love that aspect of, of home life. Um, when my husband gets home, I have a decent meal to put on the table for him and I'm so happy for that. And he's very happy about that. He never, ever, ever complained when I worked. And if he got home before I got home, he started the meal. Um, there was there was never any complain complaints about anything like that. But it feels good after you've after you've worked out for most of your adult life, when you get to do that on a regular basis for the person you love, it's a good thing. Yes, yes, I'm an old fashioned girl. <laughs> <clears throat> Nancy asked, does my daughter or daughter-in-law have any interest in following my craft? And the answer to that is, my daughter does not. Um, she is very creative, very extremely creative. She's an artist. And when she was a little girl, I signed her up for sewing classes because I was sure that that's what she needed to do. <laughs> And she went through a season of sewing classes and, she, and it was mostly like um, clothing and bags and stuff like that, that, that they were doing for kids, kids can sew. And she loved it. She really liked doing it. But the older she got, you could, I could see that that's not where her interest was going to go. Uh, and like I said, she's a wonderful graphic designer and artist. She's a, she does a lot of pen and ink sketching and, uh, yeah, you can follow her on Instagram and on Facebook. Her, her handle is B B E E Stanton creative. And uh, I will, I'll link her below. She's, uh, she's really, really wonderful artist and she works for people all over the world. She's done some really big jobs and little jobs. And so yeah, check her out. Now my daughter-in-law uh, owns a little gift shop in Annapolis Royal, which is a town about mm, 45 minutes from here. It's a beautiful little boutique. It's called The Woven Basket. You can find her on Instagram and Facebook too. Um, but she is more interested in fiber arts than my daughter is. She has tried rug hooking. She has tried embroidery. I think she's done some knitting, but I'm not positive. But I can see that she may um, tend to uh, be more interested in the stuff I'm doing than my daughter is. That's for sure. Pam Donaldson asked what my favorite color was. And I bet some of you already know <laughs> it's red. Um, definitely red. Pink is a close second for some things, definitely not for decorating, but, uh, red is for quilting and cross stitch, it's red. <laughs> for vehicles, I have a black one right now and I hate it. Ugh, I live on a dirt road. It's not fun. <laughs> okay, so that's all of the personal questions. I should say if I if you asked a question and I've missed it, please let me know and I will address it in my next regular floss too. So stitching related questions. Verpy R asked, what time of day do I like to stitch or do, do I tend to stitch? And really, I stitch any time of day, but the majority is in the evening. Once in a while, I'll stitch in the morning after my husband has left for work and the house is quiet again. Um, depending on the weather, on what my plans are for the day, how I'm feeling. 
um, yeah, I stitched a little, I stitched a few minutes this morning. Um, creatively, uh, but I should, I, uh, I don't know what I said. Most of my stitching is in the evening. <clears throat> um, the rest of the day I'm either, um, sewing or, um, uh, doing errands or, you know, I'm involved in theater. I'm really busy with that right now. So most of my stitching is evening stitching. So, um, creatively asked, what charting software do I use? I use Mac stitch. Um, I just got into selling and charting my own patterns in earlier this year. And, um, I actually started designing my own patterns like a year, like when COVID started, but I wasn't charting with a, with a program. I was just using graph paper. And so when I decided I would try selling, I, I pick, I bought, um, Mac stitch and I really like the way it works. There's a lot I don't know about it. Um, but I'm learning as I go. Daniela Dreskin and Somi Sarah asked me what my favorite piece is that I've stitched, um, aside from my own designs. And it's kind of hard. All these favorite questions are hard for me. Um, I like everything I stitch. Um, there's very few things that once I've got them finished, I don't love. But this one is one I stitched years ago, and I've shown it before. And I love it so much. This is a Santa sampler. It was in an issue of Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. And I had it professionally framed. And I faithfully put it out every year. And usually this time of year, it comes out on, hangs above the mantle here in my living room. And stays out until hmm, February or March usually. I love it. It's got a lot of glitter in it. You probably can't see it. There's glitter in these snowflakes. There's glitter all down here through this snow. And then a lot of the back stitching on the Santas is done in gold or silver chronic. Um, this has like that, this is that, um, uh, some kind of braid. I, I think it's a chronic. It's not fun to stitch with. I can tell you that. But, uh, yeah, I don't think this woodsy one doesn't have any glitter, but all four others have lots of glitter. And then there's some glitter in the, in the sky there too. So anyway, it was a pleasure to stitch this. And I am Canadian. I debated about this American Santa. I love, I love his outfit. I love the stripes. But if I were doing it again, maybe I would try to make it more Canadian. But the classic Santa is very Canadian too, with the red and white. So anyway, it's it's a nice one. I love it. So that's probably one of my favorite pieces that I've stitched. So Somi Sarah also asked if someone insisted I keep only the patterns I have from one specific designer, which designer would that be? Again, that's a hard one. Um, I like a lot of different designers. I like a lot of different styles. Um, but practically speaking, I would probably go with Blackbird Design because I have quite a few Blackbird Designs in a collection right now that I hope to do and I have uh, a few others and then I have a Blackbird Design book, The Winds of Autumn. So I could content myself with Blackbird Designs that I have on hand for quite a long time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, that is one way to answer that question. Debbie Sisk asked if I have a favorite needle and I do not. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't have a special needle. I use um, Anchor 24 count is what I typically use because we don't have a cross-stitch shop nearby. This is what is available at Walmart here. And so um, it works fine for me. I have never used any special needle, um, so I don't know if I'm missing out. <laughs> but... This works for me. 
Um, and she also asked if I have a favorite fabric count. Um, if you had asked me that six months ago, I probably would have said 28 count uh, Lugana or even weave. Um, I do like 32 count. I, I can't see. Um, I have the mag eye things and if I didn't have them, I probably wouldn't be able to stitch at all. Um, it doesn't matter what count I'm stitching on. I use them. I have just recently started, um, well, I shouldn't say that. I have in the past stitched 18 count and a couple of small things on 36 count, but I did make a point of ordering some 36 count linen because I would like to try linen more and I am stitching on it right now and with one thread over two and I am loving one thread. It doesn't have quite the coverage I wanted, but I do like the one thread. Anyway, so anywhere from 28 count to 36 count right now. 28 and 40, 32 being probably my favorites. Um, and you can't get 36 count Lagana. <clears throat> you can only get 28 count and 32 count. That's why I went with the linen because I wanted to do some 36 count. Anyway, it's, uh, yeah, so. Not necessarily favorite, but yeah, it it's what I, I lean towards most. Patricia Dodd asked, have I ever designed anything um, related to Anne of Green Gables? And no, I have not. Um, I'm pretty sure Anne of Green Gables is pretty strict with their licensing. So you'd have to be really careful not to fringe on any of their copyright, copyrighted designs. Um, I have seen some quilts. I've seen some uh, other things that um, made me question, you know, I wonder if that's legit, if they, if they should be doing that. My daughter does a, um, she does a Inktober every year. So for the month of October, she um, has a prompt each day and does a small little um, three inch detailed drawing. Usually, usually it's maritime related or like I'm pretty sure last year, she did all spooky, ghosty, um, not necessarily Hall not necessarily Halloween designs, but things that were um, legends for maritime ghost stories and stuff like that. And so this year she just did, she asked for prompts. She asked people to um, make suggestions. And one of the ones she did this year, and she sells them every day. She sells them. She posts them around eight or eight or nine o'clock each each night, and within minutes they've sold. And uh, so this year she did uh, an Anne of Green Gable one, an Anne of Green Gables one, and it never even occurred to her that she probably shouldn't sell it until she was done and ready to post it, and she couldn't sell it because she felt that it was uh, uh, an infringement on their copyright. So I probably will not ever do any Anne of Green Gable designs. Uh, Sandra Moore and IB Stitching asked, when did I start stitching? And that, I was, I was a teenager. The first, you know, when we first um, learned about cross-stitching, counted cross-stitch, um, I don't remember what my earliest project would have been. I know we did some Precious Memories pieces I found an older piece yesterday in the spare bedroom that my kids usually sleep in when they're home. It's been there, but you know how you just, you don't see it as there on the wall. And after a while, it's just, uh, it's a little house piece with a little verse that I stitched and I was going to bring it up today. Uh, I stitched that when we were first married. So that would have been 38, 37 years ago, something like that. It's pretty, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I framed it myself in a little frame that fit perfectly. You can, and now over the years, you can see it's drooped a little and you can see a staple in there. <laughs> anyway, um, and then of course I stitched pretty regularly for, from the time we were married until, uh, 
probably I probably 15 years off and on I stitched in that time and then I rarely rarely took it out um, until COVID um, then I got back into it uh, two years ago and yeah it's been two and a half years ago it's just been straight out ever since <laughs> oh dear I love it um Donna Bennett asked have I stitched on 40 count no I have not and I probably won't <laughs> uh is there any floss I don't like um the only floss that I've had a chance to use that I didn't like was Krynic and I will use it if I have to but uh it's not fun and she also asked if I was part of a stitchy group and I am not I would love to be uh I love the social aspect of all the crafts that I do but uh, there are not a lot of cross stitchers in the area right now uh, my sister and I get together sometimes and stitch together but otherwise I it is making a comeback I do see more people um, when I post a picture on Facebook and say show what I've done or whatever people I can see that it is it is making a comeback so maybe someday Wanda Greer asked if I have a favorite cross stitch designer. Uh, I can't say I have an, an absolute 100% favorite. I love Blackbird. I love Brenda Gervais, although her patterns are hard to get here. I love Lizzie Kate. Um, I like Bent Creek. I like um, the drawn thread, but I've never done any. Um, yeah there there's a lot uh there's so many designers out there and i love the housewives stitching of the housewives i love their designs i've done some of theirs um there's just no end to the possibilities i like carolyn manning designs i've done a couple of hers and i'm working on one now um yeah there's just there's no end <laughs> um andrea dixon asked where do i get inspiration for cross stitch patterns um instagram definitely um i like i follow a lot of uh sign makers wooden sign makers you know i love words and i love phrases and sayings and quotes and and sign makers are a really good place to find some fun quotes that are uh, short enough to do a quick to stitch with uh, nature definitely in nature and classics classic music classic movies classic Christmas there's so many um, I love old movies I, I love old music and uh, yeah hymns I love um, I guess it's not behind me it's over here um, there's a church in the wildwood that was that's one of my most popular pieces and that just came from i was probably just humming it one day or whatever who knows um how do i get started stitching now i meant to look back at the question and i forgot to i don't know if she meant how did i get started designing or how would you go about getting started to design and really when I when I did it I like I said earlier I used graph paper uh, you can go online and print your own free graph paper at a small a small inch count like um, you can count you can print 14 count paper so that you'll have 14 squares to an inch or smaller or bigger whatever you want and I did that and that's how I started and um, now like I said I'm using uh, max stitch which is quicker and and you can see your design quicker because it's in color but that's how I got started um, people I you know I I had been designing quilts for a while anyway and I had some ideas for cross stitch when I got back into it and decided I can do that I'm gonna do that so I did and then when I would post it on my social media people would say oh where's that pattern where can I get that pattern and so I thought hmm, maybe I should be 
considering selling some cross stitch patterns. So I didn't for close to two years and then I decided, yeah, I guess I will. Um, my quilting patterns, I sell paper patterns and PDF patterns for most of them, but the cross stitch patterns I, I've done just uh, PDF, uh, cross stitch I've done just a PDF so far. And I, I don't have any definite plans to branch out into printed copies, but maybe someday I will, we'll see. Uh, I'm watching the time here. Trudy Anderson asked if I ever do any cross stitch finishing to show finishing in the process. And Linda Ward asked if I ever have done any cross stitch pillows on video. And I have not. Um, and I don't see that I will be anytime soon because of the internet situation here. Um, the internet is really the pits here in my part of Nova Scotia. And I live about a quarter of a mile from the paved road, the, the main road, um, the main road here. <laughs> and, and, um, what do you call it? Fiber op went through here probably a year, it might even be a little more than a year ago. And like I said, we're a quarter of a mile from where that went through and nothing we we won't get it they do say we're going to get it in 2023 but i'm not expecting it i'm not not holding my breath that's for sure so when i make a floss tube video or any kind of a video that you know i i have to go to my sisters to to load it um it just won't load here it just just we are on data um so it's slow it it's so much better than it used to be on dial up, but it's still nothing compared to what it's like, you know, in, in the cities and the, in the towns. But, um, yeah, so because of that, I just, I know it would take forever to upload even at my sister's because a video that, that I would be making for finishing videos or anything like that would typically be longer. And so, now, if we do get internet, if we do get um, fiber op through here, then possibly I would consider that, but not right now. No plans for that right now. Bonnie Scheffler asked uh, about changing colors in a project, um, changing your floss colors. And I just do whatever I want. There are no rules for me for cross stitch. Um, I do what I like. I do what I have on hand if I don't want to take the time to go to the shop and get something else. You know, if, it, if I'm doing a snowman and it calls for a specific orange for his nose for five stitches and I don't have it, I put in whatever color I have. Um, I do, I have not done a whole lot with fancy floss with um, variegated flip threads, but I like them. Um, but I don't like stitching one stitch at a time. I tend to stitch a row and then come back. Um, so yeah, uh, but like I said, I, I do, I do have some and I've done it some and I love the look of it, but, um, I, f I struggle when I'm doing a pattern that calls for a fancy, a fancy floss and there is no conversion for it. So I just pick what I think is closest to it from the picture and go with that. But like I said, um, with my designs, I love seeing people change it up. I love seeing something done in a in a different color or um in your own interpretation i love that so for me there's no rules you do what you like okay so that is it for stitching and personal and the rest is quilting and i'm gonna try let me see how many are there here i want to see if we can get this done in one video so charlene leblanc asked my fav favorite quilt i have did oh shoot Someone asked in the stitching, how did I miss that? My favorite of my own designs. I don't see it. But typically, my favorite of my own designs is the most recent one. <laughs> and I did want to show this, which I will be showing again in my next regular floss tube. I just got it out last week on the market. This is I Heard the Bells. Um, Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without the traditional carols for me. 
So I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Oh, Tannenbaum, silent night with the little town. My daughter said, oh, the little sheep are so cute. I said, they're not sheep, it's Bethlehem. <laughs> Joy to the world, a definite favorite. Away in a manger with a little baby Jesus there. And oh, come all ye faithful with the country church. So that one is my latest. So that is my favorite. And I finished it on a piece of sticky board with some mat, uh, batting behind it. And then I put a piece of foam board with some plaid, red plaid fabric. And I used a piece of chenille yarn with a little bit of glitter in it. I don't know if you can see the glitter. And then at the top, I added two bows and some greenery and I poinsettia button. Now I haven't mounted it on anything. I'd really like to put it on a piece of barn board. I just haven't found a piece, so I will hang on to it and see if I can find a piece that will work well for that. So that would be my favorite of my own designs right now. Okay, so back to the quilting. Um, my favorite quilt that I designed, again, it's hard to pick a favorite, but I did pick this one up out of the basket today. This one is Mason Jar Mama. It's a very popular one. And I did it when I had my shop as a block of the week, block of the month. And it is so much fun. I don't know if you can see how I'm, how I'm doing there with the showing it, but um, it is so much, it was a really fun quilt to do. The button one is the first one I did. So you can see it has some wool, it's wool applique on a cotton background. And there's some wool buttons and then some real buttons. That was really fun. Um, a lot of people ask about the pencils. The back to school block is just applique. There's nothing special. It's just pink wool and gray wool and yellow wool. And then a lot of people say this one is their favorite because it has an upside down jar and the little tree and the, sand, the snowman. So that was a really fun quilt to make and work on the whole the whole 12 months were enjoyable um but like i said there's so many favorites i it's hard for me to pick um a favorite quilt that's not my design i don't even know what it would be uh maybe from from my own from the quilts that i've made let me just see if i've got a picture here on my ipad i probably don't but I made a quilt years ago. God, I can't even remember. It's called From Sea to Shining Sea, I think. And uh, I seen my my actual quilt, my picture posted recently. Someone else had had scoffed the picture and posted it as their own uh, in a Facebook group, and I commented and said, "Well, that's a very interesting." <laughs> Thing to see on here as the it's exactly my own picture that you're using but pff, not much you can do about it uh, I don't see it here anyway it is definitely a favorite yeah, um, it's I can't remember connecting corners I think was the technique she called it. the 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 lady that designed it um, came up with this technique called like I said I think she called it connecting corners and, and that was a lot of fun. It was a very time consuming quilt, but um, worth every minute that went into it. Uh, my favorite quilt patterns, definitely one would be the Log Cabin. This one is one that I made when I had the shop. Um, it has one inch strips, finishes at half inch strips, and that was just a ball to make. I loved it and I love that little quilt. So it's used as a table topper or I put it on the wall or on the back of the chair or whatever. And then my other favorite block would probably be this block, which I've always called it a morning star, but I know that's not the proper name. It is a variable star, pretty sure. But it's definitely a favorite block. Lost my pencil. Nope, there it is. Um, that was asked by Arlene Curry. Sorry. Melissa and Mrs. Bob and Lacer asked how long I have been quilting. 
I have been quilting, I'm 58 years old and I have been quilting since I was a little girl. Like probably, my grandmother lived with us, my dad's mother lived with us from the time I was seven or eight, excuse me, seven or eight until I was, I think 15. Mm. 13 maybe. And I can remember her teaching me to hand piece um, hexagons together. They weren't English paper pieced hexagons. That's the earliest I can remember actually piecing. Now my other grandmother lived about five minutes drive away and um, she often had a quilt in the frames quilting or she was piecing, hand piecing. And I can remember the bus, she lived right next door to me where I live now. But the bus never came down that road because there were no kids on this road. And so the bus would come to the corner where she lived and you could either turn right to come to her house or turn left to go to my house. And I know I was probably only seven, eight, nine years old. Um, Mom would let me get off the bus at the corner and walk to Granny's house and quilt uh, if she had a quilt in the frame so that I could quilt with her in the afternoon. I can remember doing that several times. So I was, I was pretty young when I first learned and, um, yeah, it's Cindy got it also asked who taught me to quilt and it would be those two ladies. One of my earliest memories as a little girl was playing under the quilt frame at a quilting bee here in our community. Um, myself and a friend played on, I can remember it just like it was yesterday playing under those, under those frames. If you've never had a chance to attend an old fashioned quilting bee, I hope you do. It's, it's, it's a, it's a fun day. Melissa asked, uh, my favorite place to find quilt patterns. And if you mean to buy, I hardly rarely buy a quilt pattern anymore because mostly what I make is something I've designed myself, but, uh, uh, I get a lot of inspiration from Instagram, seeing what other people are making. Um, there's two particular quilters on Instagram and I should have gotten their names. Repro Quilter is one of them. And I think the other one is Laura Mat Maddox. I will try to link both of them below. Um, ND Quilter One and Pam Donaldson both asked who my favorite designer quilter is. I would have to say Primitive Gatherings, Lisa Bonjean. I love, love, love everything she does. From her wool work to her traditional piecing, I love, love, love it. Um, yeah, she's probably, like, again, it's hard to pick a favorite, but there's so many, but she definitely does stand out. Uh, Mrs. Bob and Lacer asked, what inspires me to quilt? Uh, everything. Uh, I don't need to be inspired. <laughs> uh, it seems as though I need to quilt. Um, when I, after my kids were in, um, out of elementary school, I went back to work part-time and eventually that led to full-time and I did not quilt for a while in there. Very rare did I, did I get any quilting in and I missed it terribly. It was like, uh, with, I had with, it was like a withdrawal thing really. Yeah. It, uh, I really, really, really missed it. Um, I don't need, like I said, I, I don't need to be inspired. I just need to walk in the sewing room and see any number of pieces that need to be finished. <laughs> I really should do a quilt, um, whip parade cause there's a lot anyway. Yeah. Uh, but you know, what other people are working on inspires me again, nature and classics, uh, same as a lot of the same things that, um, with cross stitch, uh, Helen Bowie asked, do I miss the shop? I had my own quilt shop from 2013 to 2018, five years. Someone asked stitch, stitching granny of 17 asked how long. So I had the shop for five years and no, I do not miss the shop at all. Um, I loved having the shop. I was fulfilling a lifelong dream, but there were aspects of the shop that were not fun. I hate the government work. I hate the paperwork. Um, but the people, the friendships that I made in the shop, they are 
lasting. And uh, when I when I opened the shop in 2013, the first customer in the door has remained a really good friend. And um, we had uh, we made a point of uh, having a visit with her last week, myself and my very good friend. And uh, yeah, I have made some really wonderful relationships as a result of having the, the, the shop. So as for that part, yes, I miss the friendships. Um, I miss the time that I spent. We had a, uh, uh, I can't remember what it was, every two weeks, a monthly group that used to come in on Tuesdays. And we had some really fun visits then. And um, I miss that part of it. But as the, the aspect of the ordering and the keeping things on hand and keeping up with what needed to be sewn. There was, I, I have, I still have tons of projects that never got finished because it, it just seemed as though I was constantly having to keep up with something new. And so I would piece something and, but it never got, often it never got quilted. So they need to be <laughs> dealt with. Uh, Kathy Cobb asked if I would be doing a tour of my sewing craft room. Whew, not today. I'm out here in my living room because my sewing room is a disaster. <laughs> it's full of Christmas presents and I was finishing this cross stitch piece and yeah, it desperate, desperately, and it's a very tiny, tiny, tiny little space. We are contemplating next year um, on the front of our house in the basement are two, the two small bedrooms that were our kids. We're contemplating taking the petition out between those two rooms and making it one big room. That would be my sewing room. It would be much brighter and I would be able to get some new storage and yeah, we're, we're, we're thinking about doing that. But my husband is a carpenter. He does that all day long and he comes home at the end and doesn't want to do it all weekend, which I totally understand. So, yeah, if we tackle that, it will be a long-term project. <laughs> uh, I be stitching asked if I have if I have other hobbies, and I definitely do. Um, reading, I love to read. Um, I consider family a hobby. <laughs> Any time that I get to spend with my family is wonderful. Uh, it's not often that we're all together, um, but when we are, we really have good time. Uh, camping, we like to camp, even though we have not in the past few years been able to go a lot, but I'm hoping that that changes. Uh, movies, we love movies. Not, not so much going to the movies, we don't do that much, but we love watching old movies or any kind of movies here at home. And older hobbies, I used to knit. Uh, I was really heavy into scrapbooking, really, really, really heavy into scrapbooking. I got a few pages published in magazines and yeah, and toll painting. I used to do a little bit of toll painting. Pam Donaldson asked, what type of material do you prefer? And then she asked, and then she included contemporary, Civil War, prim. Um, and my favorites would be traditional and Civil War. Um, hands down, I, traditional scrappy quilts are my favorite. You can't... You know, I, I look at the modern quilts and I love them. Like I love the Elizabeth Hartman designs and uh, the quilt works and all of them. You know, I love them. I, it's a quilt. It's beautiful. But when I sit down to sew, I tend to lean towards traditional piecing and Civil War or um, Kansas Troubles type fabric, Kim Deal type fabric. I love Lori Holt. Um, but her colors are not typically what I sew with on a regular basis. Ah, that was the last question. <laughs> Let me just go back through and make sure I got them all. I do so. Okay. So I'm at 54 minutes. <laughs> I think that may be the longest I've ever taped. Uh, and I did want to mention my new pattern again. Um, it is available in my Etsy shop as a PDF. So if you're interested in stitching this for Christmas, it's stitched up really quickly. It's all stitched on uh, with DB DMC and I stitched it on 27 count Linda cloth. And the color is vintage country mocha. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. 
uh, hopefully this will upload. I have to go to my sister's tonight. Um, so I'm hoping, hoping, keeping my fingers crossed that that works out. So again, thank you. If I, if you asked a question and I missed it, please ask again and I will address it in my next video. Have a great day. See ya.